Welcome to week five of lecture. So for week five, you do have an exam. Um, due to the university being closed on Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to give you a little bit of extra time to complete that exam this week. Um, so typically your exams are going to be open for a 48-hour time period, um, but due to the uniqueness of the university closing, I'm going to leave your exam um, open for three days. So I'm going to open it up on... Tuesday morning, and then you'll have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to take the exam. Thursday, it will close at 11.59, so right before midnight on Thursday is when that exam is going to close. Um, exams should be easy for you to complete within an hour time limit that will be given, um, and questions will be multiple choice, fill in the blank, and primarily um, free response. It should be a fairly easy exam as long as you've been watching your lectures and actively taking notes. Keep in mind that your exam will all be online, um, so you will be able to use any notes that you've taken throughout the duration of the semester. But with that being said, still be familiar with your notes and study because it will have that hour time limit. Um, so don't forget to take your exam this week. That will be available Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For your assignment this week, um, with university being closed again, I'm going to extend the due date for your week 5 assignment to Wednesday at 10. So instead of doing Tuesday at midnight, it's going to be due Wednesday at 10, so right before our class is meeting um, this week. So opening up that week 5 assignment until Wednesday. You can still go ahead and submit it early, but again, not required. It'll be due Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, for week five content, your schedule is going to say um, that we are doing farrier and equine dentistry. However, that schedule is subject to change. So for week five, we'll be doing parts of the saddle and bridle. That will be your lecture content for this week. And that way next week, so week six, the week of February 22nd, um, we will be having an industry professional come in. Um, in relation to equine dentistry and farrier. Um, so keeping that in mind, the, this week five content is parts of the saddle and bridle, and don't forget to take that exam this week. At the beginning of the semester when I went through the course description, I did say that students would have the option to either ride stock seat or hunt seat equitation. That being said, when I go through parts of the saddle and bridle, we will look at versus all Western versus English tack. I'm going to recommend and suggest that everyone ride Western. So our saddle on our left hand side is going to be a Western saddle, which is our stock seat, equitation, or our horsemanship. For those of you that are on the equestrian team, you all will be competing um, in Western horsemanship. That being said, the course description does give you the option to ride hunt seat or English. So our saddle on the right hand side, our black saddle, is an English style saddle. So if you so choose to ride English, um, that is perfectly fine and we will accommodate you throughout the semester and the course to make sure that you are provided the information needed. So you do have the option between riding Western and English. Um, gray won't be affected, harmed, or bettered in either way, but I do recommend um, that everyone ride Western. In looking at parts of the Western saddle, there is going to be some crossover and similarity between our Western and our English saddle. As you will see at the end of this slideshow presentation, I will show you how to correctly saddle a horse. There will be different parts of the saddle that I reference throughout the semester during your lab time when you have the opportunity to ride and saddle your horse. There will be parts of the saddle that Cresta will identify. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a list of good parts of the saddle to be familiar with. So go ahead and highlight these and make sure that you're familiar with where these parts of the saddle are located. The Starting on the upper left hand side of the saddle in the photograph we have a horn. We then have the seat of the saddle, the cantle, the skirt, the flank billet, 
the flank cinch or the hind cinch, the front cinch or the girth, the stirrup, the fender, the latigo, and the gullet. So those parts to highlight and be familiar with again are the horn, seat, cantle, skirt, flank billet, flank cinch or hind cinch, front cinch or girth, stirrup, fender, latigo, and gullet. When considering the western saddle, there's many different styles for different disciplines and types of riding within western. So going over a couple of those saddles, our upper left hand side is a pleasure saddle. This is an all purpose saddle. It is built with a higher cantle and a padded seat. The saddle can have a front cinch um, only. Then we, on the lower right, or upper right, I'm sorry, upper right, we have a roping saddle. This is designed to rope livestock and therefore it is well constructed with strength, fit, and durability in mind. The roping saddle is going to have a front and a back cinch with a strong horn, a low seat, and wide deep stirrups. So the roping saddle is truly designed um, to be a working saddle for use. The reining saddle is going to be on the lower left hand side. This is designed to allow as much feel as possible. It is designed with a smaller horn and these saddles normally only have a front cinch. On the lower right hand side we have a barrel saddle. This saddle is usually lightweight with a deep seat and often the saddle has wide swells to help keep the rider in the saddle. The saddle horn is taller to allow the rider grip. And going over these four different um, types of western saddles, that's not to say these are the only four. These are just four common ones to be familiar with. Next in looking at parts of the saddle, we have an English saddle. The parts that you'll want to be familiar with for an English saddle is going to be the pommel, the seat, the cantle, the flap, the knee insert, and the skirt. So again, the ones that you need to be familiar with in an English saddle is the pommel, seat, cantle, flap, knee insert, and then the skirt. So like I said, there will be some commonalities between the two. So you can see the seat, the cantle, and the skirt are going to be a little bit of crossover and similarities between the Western and the English saddle. In looking at different types of English saddles for different types of riding, the far left hand side we have an all purpose saddle. This type of saddle is designed for a rider who wants to do a little bit of everything. The knee roll is moderate and the flap is cut to be slightly forward. The center or black saddle is a dressage saddle. This saddle has a longer flap with a longer stirrup and the bars are set further back in order to aid the leg position. The knee rolls are designed in a way that keeps the rider's leg in a straighter position as well. The far right hand side is a jumping saddle. This saddle has forward cut panels and flaps with large knee rolls, which provide support to the rider's legs when jumping. This saddle also has a flatter seat, which allows the rider to shift their weight over the horse's center of gravity. Now that we've talked about different parts of the saddle, we're ready to move on to different parts of the bridle. On the left-hand side, we have a Western bridle, and on the right, we have an English bridle. In looking at parts of the Western bridle, we have the headpiece or the crown piece. We then have the brow band, the throat latch. If you are familiar with our anatomy and think back to that lecture, we went over where the horse's throat latch was located. Then for parts of our bridle, we have a cheek piece, a curb strap, 
a bit and then the reins. As we get further on into the lecture, I will go over a couple of different types of bits, reasons why we would and wouldn't have a curb strap or a curb chain, and we'll also cover different types of bridle setups that we can have. So this is just going to be a basic bridle setup for western style riding. When looking at different types of bits, especially for western riding, we have a snaffle bit on the left hand side and a curb bit on the right hand side. So on the left hand side with our snaffle bit, our snaffle bit is going to be a broken bit. And when riding in a snaffle, you're not going to use a curb chain or a curb strap. Um, when riding in a snaffle bit, typically you'll either be riding a young horse. So when showing, um, for example, the snaffle bit futurity, these are going to be young horses. They're going to be ridden two-handed when showing since they are riding in a snaffle bit. As horses age and move up, then oftentimes they will transition into a curb. So a curb bit um, can be a broken or solid mouthpiece. It's going to have a shank and your curb bits are going to always use either a curb chain or a curb strap. And then when showing in a curb bit, you will also be required to show one handed. For the purposes of our class, we will likely, all riders will ride in a snaffle bit and ride two-handed. Um, a couple of exceptions may be made throughout the semester, but for the most part we will ride in snaffle bits and ride two-handed. Most of the time when you're riding western, there's a fair amount of individuals who will be riding and showing in each. However, when showing English, you will primarily see a snaffle bit used. Um, there's a couple of exceptions will you, where you will see a curb and you will see curb chains, but this is going to be very few and far between in English writing disciplines. For different parts of the bridle, when considering an English bridle, there's going to be commonality in the crown piece, the brow band, the cheek piece, the throat latch, the bit, and the reins. So the difference that we will see in our English bridle is going to be the use of a nose band or a cabison. As we're building on material each week, it's very important that when we're going out and catching horses, we're tying them, we're grooming them, um, we're putting on their uh, protective boots and saddling that we're letting that material build upon itself and we're making sure that we do that correctly week on week. Um, as we move forward and get to our exam three, um, when your writing evaluation is occurring, all those little pieces are going to build um, and count towards your grade during that time. So make sure that you're practicing that as we're going through lab each week. Um, that being said, we're going to go through the correct way to saddle our horses. We've talked about parts of the saddle and parts of the bridle. I will be putting on a western saddle, very um, similar to if you were saddling for English, a couple minor differences. If you do choose to ride English throughout the duration um, of the class, then Cresta will work with you individually one-on-one -on, -one on the differences um, between English and western when you're preparing to ride. So that being said, I'm gonna start with my saddle pad. I'm going to put it on from the left hand side of my horse. Um, so I'm going to place that on the center of the back. After I have my saddle pad on, then I'll be ready to get my saddle. In getting ready to throw my saddle on, I want to make sure that all of my girths, as well as my ladder, that all that is looped up. It's not dragging. It's not going to catch when I go to throw it over the horse's back. So just like when we're haltering, make sure that you're prepared when you're going up to the horse. So I have everything I'm nicely tied up and I'm ready to lay my saddle over my horse. Um, ideally, when I go to pick this saddle up and throw it over my horse, I want to drop it um, softly and gently on their back. And also I want that to be um, where that saddle is gonna be placed for the duration of my ride. 
So now that I have my saddle on, it should be centered over my saddle, saddle pad. And then I'm going to take the front of my saddle pad and lift that. So lifting the front of my saddle pad, um, creating a small teepee here is gonna make sure that I don't have any pinch on that horse's back when I go to tighten my saddle. So I'm gonna lightly lift my saddle pad once I have my saddle in place. At that point, if I have my saddle centered um, over my pad, then I'll be ready to tighten it with the girth. If for whatever reason, when I go to throw my saddle up, I don't get it centered, I need to readjust it. At this point, I wanna readjust this saddle to where it's centered. Um, then I'm ready to go to the off side of my horse. Some of our saddles here will have a back cinch, um, others will not. So when I take down my, um, take down my girths, this is my front girth. This is what's gonna hold my saddle in place and be tight. Um, this saddle, I also have a hind cinch on it. So this is our girth that keeps our saddle tight in place. Um, this is our hind cinch that is optional. Some of our saddles will have them, others will not. I wanna make sure that my girth isn't folded up, that it's laid smoothly against my horse's side, and then I'll be ready to go to the other side and tighten my girth. Can take my left stirrup, hook it up over the saddle horn, then I'll undo my latigo. So this is what I'm going to use to cinch and tighten my girth. Reach underneath my horse to grab the girth. I'm gonna take my latigo through once. Back up through the top. And then back through. So I'm gonna double it over itself twice. Before I go tightening that, I wanna to go to my back cinch and I also wanna tighten, put that into place. Um, with our back cinches, sometimes you'll see people ride around and they'll be very loose. Um, they have a perception that because this is back on the horse's withers that this will be like a bucking strap. It's not. Um, so having it very, very loose on our horse um, when they're stopping, when they're riding, they're going to have a chance of catching their hind foot. So I don't want to leave this um, significantly loose. At the same time, I don't want this completely cinched up on my horse's belly. Um, so if I can slide one hand in there, then that's going to be an ideal, um, ideal fitment for our hind cinch. So for her, she's kind of between holes. Um, I could go in this hole and be safe. I could go one down and be fine. Um, so then I'm ready for my front cinch. Well, cinch a while ago, we just had pressure on it. Um, this is the cinch that's going to truly hold our saddle um, tight and in place on our horse. So like I said, some of our saddles here will only have a front cinch. That's okay. You're still safe. You're good to go. Um, so for hers, when I go to tighten it, you'll notice that I, I run out of holes. So if you go to tighten a saddle and you don't have a hole that you can put your, put your latigo back in to hold it tight, then you want to know how to tie your latigo. And tying your latigo, I'm going to go under on the left hand side. You can get close. So in going under on the left hand side, I'm going to go up on the right hand side and then back down. People say that's the same way you tie a tie. I can't tie a tie, I have no idea. Um, so in tightening that, I've gone two loops. We'll start, start back to the beginning. So I put my latigo through once in my girth. Put it back in that second time. And then to tie it off when I'm ready to tighten it, go down to the left up through the right and then down through the middle In tightening your saddle um, it can be too loose it can be too tight i want it to be snug to hold the saddle into place um, most of us aren't strong enough that we can get this saddle too tight um, so for myself i can tighten it and then 
then I'll tie it off. After I have it tight and tied off, then if you have a number of, of excess in your latigo, then you can loop it back through. We talked about how to saddle the horse to ensure um, that your saddle is going to stay in place. But aside from making sure um, that the saddle is the correct size for you, we also need to adjust your stirrups. Um, as you ride, you'll become more familiar. Some people ride with stirrups a little bit shorter than others. Um, so a lot of it is on comfort level, um, although Cresta will help to make sure that your stirrups are adjusted correctly. A good rule of thumb for me um, is the length of my arm. And placing my arm here, I'll know how long my stirrups need to be. So it's a pretty good way for me to tell um, if a stirrup is accurately adjusted before I get in the saddle and I can fill it. Is if that stirrup is arm length, then that's going to be um, ideal for me to ride in. As far as adjusting the stirrups, we do have keepers um, that we'll have to take off. You can like close so we can see it. And then this leather piece will slide up and I can adjust my stirrup. So up, I'm gonna have a shorter stirrup. Down, I'm gonna have a longer stirrup. Um, so for myself, um, you can see a rub spot here. I normally ride in uh, 10 and eight. So I'm gonna put that in the hole, slide it back down, make sure that my saddle, um, my fenders are adjusted evenly and then Put my keeper back on. And so I want to make sure that my stirrups are adjusted evenly on both sides. Okay, and then we'll have our stirrups um, accurately adjusted to be ready to ride. So now that we have our horse saddled, um, we're ready to bridle them. Uh, we've talked about a couple of uh, different types of bits as well as bridles for English versus Western. Um, so just to show a couple of examples, um, this bridle here is going to have a brow band um, in which both ears um, will go through to hold onto the horse's face. And then this bit is going to be a snaffle bit. So it has a broken mouthpiece and is a snaffle bit. Um, the snaffle bit does not have a curb chain on it, so our snaffle bits will not um, use a curb chain when they are on the horse. And then we'll go through a different couple of different types of reins. Um, so this is going to be a circular rein. It's going to be complete. There's not going to be any splits or breaks in it. Um, this would be a contest rein. Um, the next type that I have that we'll talk about um, so this head stall is a little bit thicker, um, still going to serve our same purpose to hold our, um, hold our bit in our horse's mouth and on their face, but this one is a one ear head stall. Um, so just the right ear is going to um, fit through this, this one ear hole. Um, this bit here is going to be a curb bit. It's a spoon or a corrective bit. Um, it's complete. It doesn't have any breaks in it. But because it is a curb bit and does have a shank, then it also has a curb, a curb chain or a curb strap. So this is going to be our, um, our curb, curb bit. These are our shanks and this is our curb chain. Um, for this one, the reins that are on here are split reins. So we'll have one on each side. Um, so those are going to be our split reins. And then our final bridle, um, similar to the second one I showed you, um, we have our head stall, we have our um, ear piece, just a single ear. Um, this one's also going to be a curb bit. Um, this one is broken, but similarly a spoon and a corrective bit. Um, we still have our shank, so we know it's a curb bit. And then also we have our curb chain. Um, this one also has a a rein that isn't broken, one complete rein, um, and this is actually a roping rein, so it can be removed on, on one side and then clipped back to our horse. Um, so for Sonnet, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, go through the correct way to put this bridle on. Um, so I'll unhook my halter, and unhooking my halter, and uh, I want to make sure that either I untie them and I have a hold of that lead rope, 
Um, or I can take my reins and I can lay my reins over the horse's neck. In laying my rein over the neck or um, laying my lead rope, then I ensure that when I go to take this halter off, if they are to move or walk, that I still have control. Um, I still will be able to have that horse um, in hand. So I'll go ahead and I'll take my halter off. I don't want to hang my, let my halter hang because again, that's a, a good way to get a horse's leg stuck. So I want to make sure that I loop that up or lay that over the fence. Um, in putting the bridle um, or the bit in her mouth, I will lightly place my finger um, in her gum line and then be able to put the bridle on. Um, and looking at how the bridles are adjusted, all the bridles should already be adjusted for the horse that you're riding. Um, each horse here has their own bridle. They have a bridle that has a snaffle bit and a bridle that also has a curb bit. Um, most of the time in basic equitation, we'll, we will be riding our horses in a snaffle bit. Um, and those bridles should already correctly be adjusted um, for that, how that horse um, needs to be ridden to have the best response. Um, so at this point, I would be ready to go um, and complete my ride for the day. When I bring my horse back and I'm ready to um, take the bridle off, I want to do the same thing, either loop my rein across their neck or my lead rope. Um, and then I can slip the head stall over their ears and lightly drop the bit out of their mouth and then put my halter back on. Now that we have completed our ride for the day, um, we've taken off our bridle, we've got our halter back on and have our horse tied, um, we also need to take our saddle off. And taking our saddle off, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same. Put my stirrup up and over the horn again. Remove my back cinch. Untie my front one. Okay, it's important that I loop my latigo back up through the keeper. And then go to the other side. And going to the other side, if I only have a front cinch, then I'll put it back in my keeper single, just like that. Since this saddle does have a hind cinch, when I have two, I wanna take my hind cinch, catch it in the front buckle, and take my front one and catch it in the keeper. So again, I take my hind cinch, catch it through the front, and put my front the keeper. Um, at that point I'm then ready to remove my saddle. Again same thing. Um, I'll lightly slide that off of the horse's back. So I'll take the saddle pad along with the saddle at the same time and then that will complete um, unsaddling your horse. This will bring us to the completion of your week five lecture video. Um, so now that you're ready to complete that week five assignment, I'm also going to attach a supplemental video. Um, this video is how to fit a saddle to a horse's back properly. So throughout this lecture, we've learned the parts of the saddle, being able to identify those, as well as the parts of our bridle and being able to identify, and then how to properly saddle our horse, bridle, um, and then adjust the fit of the saddle to ourselves. So ensuring that the saddle is fit correctly for ourselves as far as seat size and adjusting our stirrups is going to be very important for the comfort in our ability to perform and ride, but we also want to consider the fit of that saddle to our horse, to our horse's back. Um, comfort of our horse is going to be key in them being able to perform at their highest level and in us working um, in teamwork and being able to do so effectively. So the video that I have selected that talks about how to properly fit a saddle to a horse's back um, is conducted by Matt Mills. He is a reining trainer um, that is high up in the ranks currently, um, but a professional in the industry that is very knowledgeable. It talks about saddle fit 
in relation to his training program. So that link will be provided right below this lecture link. Make sure that you watch that video um, and then you'll be ready to complete that week five assignment. Your first five questions will come from the lecture and then that final six question on your assignment <clears throat> is going to come from the saddle fitting video.